Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here. My purpose for talking to you this morning is to bring you up to date on my true mission. I am spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. When I speak of basic human rights, I'm talking about you as a human being. You know what that is, right? You know what you require to live exist on this planet. You know what the basic things are that you need. You know there might be many things you want, but there are certain things that you need for survival. Food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, transportation. Well, these just, and infrastructure, these just to name a few. There are many other things. But these are basic essentials. Every human being requires these things. So to live on this planet as a human being, these things are going to have to be met for everybody. Now, it is the responsibility of an individual, if their individual lives secluded, or the responsibility of the group, if they live together collectively, to utilize their intellect, accessing the resources and determine how you, this can be met for every individual within that group or that state or that country. That's the responsibility. And this is my job. Now, I've uh, been exposed to poverty all my life. I've always dreamed bigger than that. And I made pursuits to get out of that. And for the most part, the opportunity has been there and I've made some steps out. But what I recognized is this, is that poverty is always around. It's not going anywhere. And I, as I observe what's happening in the systems that we live under, there's nobody trying to get it to go any place. They're just persecuting, as far as I can see the victims of a society that has been unable or unwilling to deal with the problems. And so, for some strange reason, I feel, as I've always felt, that the reason that poverty continued to exist is because it never had anybody to really speak for it. And when I say never had anybody, I'm not talking about an individual. I'm talking about the people to speak against poverty. Well, and then that's not accurate because there are many groups that stand up and advocate prosperity. Poor people uh, got campaigns, but they are not connected. For some strange reason, they're not connected. They're just out there like individuals. And when you're an individual, you're not going to accomplish anything. And so for me, I'm an individual, I got a voice. And I've always felt that my responsibility was to be for the underdog. Whatever kind of fight it was, an underdog. Because I think underdog really didn't want to fight. The underdog being forced to fight. So I look at poverty as being victims of the those who want to be somebody without being somebody. And so I decided that I would spend my life working to eliminate poverty in America and hopefully if it was a success, when it's successful in America, maybe throughout the land. Now in order to do that, I have to stop working for others and work for righteousness. That's what I call it, righteousness. And there's nobody paying for righteousness. Nobody paying for... <laughs> And I'm not selling it. So for 40 some years, I've been committed to this cause and I haven't received any money for it. A couple of times I things got so tight I had to go to work. I made sure I got a small job that didn't pay that much, you know, like washing dishes. And uh, I even worked at maybe other place where it was similar. The purpose for that was that I needed some money to help out. Cause, I mean, you in America and in this world, nothing without money.
nothing without money. And so I spent a while washing dishes just to help out. But at the end, when I retired, receive that money they call Social Security. Now this isn't your business, but it is your business. Why? Because I'm talking to you. I want you to listen to me. So I want you to trust me. So I tell you my duty, just like I tell you my shit. I get $300 a month for Social Security. Most people, when they retire from Social Security, if they've been working, um, see, they get a pretty decent amount. It's not, it's better compared to what I get is decent. And um, the reason that I don't get more is because I don't have the credits. I didn't work continuously out there for them. I worked for you. And I depend upon whatever happens for me to happen for me. I prepare to eat grass and drink pee just for standing up for righteousness. I haven't been reduced to that level yet. But I want you to know that sometimes it's the price you have to pay to be free. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, now, when you having to go through your situations, some things you just have to go through because dealing with it is too complicated and you don't have the wherewithal. But that it should not be your situation. Rather than me trying to pick up those special groups out there of poverty, like the homeless and stuff. I want to say poverty. If you are hurting because of economics, you are being abused. Now, there are all kinds of reasons that will be given for you being in the situation that you're in. There are all kinds of reasons. But the truth of the matter is, there's only one reason that is the solution. All people will come up with all kinds of things as a solution, but it'll work for some. it worked for that little group that they're familiar with. It works with this, but it doesn't work for all. So it's still in that box. There is one that works for all. There is one that legitimizes truth and that is this, just like I say to you, basic human rights for every individual that's on this planet. Likewise, every individual on this planet, because you're here, because you have this, these rights, then you're obligated to participate in the process of making sure that those rights can be met. And that means having a career, a job. Now, there are many people that don't work today. Everybody was, that's what I've been telling you. They should have a job. <clears throat> yeah, let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong with Ma <clears throat> working at McDonald's for the, pay that Ma for the pay that McDonald's pays. It's crazy. Can you go to McDonald's, work at McDonald's, flipping those burgers and own a home, own cars, be able to buy your clothes and food? Be able to have your education, educate your kids, have health care. Can you be able to do that at McDonald's? Of course you couldn't. But there are other people who got jobs making, I don't even want to mention the prices. So what am I telling you is happening? It's an injustice that's happening to you, the people. Because they're robbing you of your basic human rights. They're robbing you of your responsibility to participate in this process. So that you can enjoy the fruits of this life. And then they'll send you a note and tell you you're not complying with this. And the reason that you're not complying is because you don't have the, re the resources, the, the wherewithal to deal with it. But they're saying you got to do this. And right in the front where there are some things perhaps that they're supposed to be doing, they are not doing. For instance, what about gerrymandering? What about robbing the people, taking the people's votes? What about putting the, the Supreme Court as the number one institution on the nominal land that's above all the laws? Well, you say they're not. But they're doing exactly what they want to do. They don't even have to re, uh, follow any ethics. I'm just saying this. What I'm saying to you is that in every institution, in every department, this design with righteousness in it, most of them, might be a few that's not. But there's always somebody abusing it. And when someone is abusing it, it is hurting someone else. So the key is this. Let's have the freedom to abuse 
and we know somebody's going to get abused. Or let's take out that possibility where nobody's abused. But you say, but if you do that, you hinder my individuality. Ain't nobody hindering your individuality. Everybody got the right to do that. So we say, bring it up, bring it up. But there are certain individualities that can stick, and there are certain that can't. The ones that stick are the ones that falls in line with the process of what you're trying to achieve and maintain. And that crap that's out there about private, and it's going to cause pain and suffering for others. Well, see, that is what the spokesman tells the people, that it is that attitude. It is that attitude that have you sitting around, can't find a job, and then walk around wondering what to do when they look at you and call you monkeys. Or put you in a position where they'll tell you that somebody else is responsible for the pain that they're going, that you're going through, and now got you hating others. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, I know you don't care, but I want to say one thing. I want to leave one message with you before I go. There is a God. You walking on this earth because there's a God. But you're suffering because you're not listening to that God. Now, there are those who are causing you pain. I want you to know that these people who stand up to cause you pain, they are only able to do it because you allow them. You are being called to stand up to resist what they're trying to do in Florida, what they're trying to do, first of all, with the women, taking away their rights. It is the responsibility for every woman to resist that. Maybe you might not believe in abortion, but that's your business and not mine. And to make a law to force you corrupts the whole deal. God doesn't force you like that. He teaches you. You learn because whoever has abortion, Necessarily, it might just involve more than the two involved in that situation. It might involve the rest of us. So whether we spend our time trying to punish people, we spend our time finding solutions to the problem, not punishment and stopping nothing. Sending people in the alleys to have abortion with clothes hangers. You're trying to save life, but you don't want to ha give them a job. You want to take it away from them. You don't want to give them the right to vote. You want to take that from them. J John Lewis, out there getting beat, <laughs> dog sprayed, standing up for the same thing that I'm telling you about today. And even having come into the Congress, representing what he was fighting for then, and every day giving it a little bit of hope, but failing all at the same time. Because things are even worse than they were then. Now they say voting rights. No, we don't want that bill. We want to take, make sure that we can always mess over some people. That's what the system is saying to us. We want to always be able to mess over you. We want to always be able to send you a note and tell you what you do, what you can do, whether you got any money to do or not. And we're going to penalize you more if you don't do it. Because we don't give a stank about you. And ladies and gentlemen, God says, get up off your ass and stand up against this evil. I got that word out the Bible. <laughs> That's not funny. So, for 20 years, it seems, for the past 20 years, it seems I've just been speaking to you. I've just been saying things to you. But everything that I've been saying to you is true. Most of the stuff that I've been saying to you has been nothing but repetition. I've just been repeating, repeating, repeating myself for 40 years. So I know exactly what I'm saying. And I know how to back it up. I know righteousness from evil. And I know as long as there's pain and suffering in this country and nobody and people are not trying to get solutions, but trying to make it worse and better for themselves. I want you to know God requires that this heaven that God has played a part in preparing for us requires 
that we accept it and reject anything that would destroy it. And what would destroy it? Lying and cheating and stealing and killing and terror and hatred and racism and bigotry and poverty and rich folks. That right there indicates that heaven has already been buried. Wake up.